Tulsi Gabbard's remarks are likely to strike a deep chord with a public already disillusioned by the current government and political system. Her message of rejecting political retaliation and curbing abuse of power could appeal to both conservatives and liberals who prioritize limited government and individual freedom. Uh, the, the troubling part about all this is it's not even people who we vote for. When you look at uh, what happened when President Biden had that infamous debate with President Trump, uh, it, it exposed the reality that many of us have known for a long time, which is that President Biden has not been the guy calling the shots. He's not been the guy making the decisions, nor has it been Kamala Harris for that matter, nor will it be if she is elected president. It is this cabal of, you know, the Democrat elite, the, the woke warmongers uh, made up of the likes of Hillary Clinton and uh, Barack Obama and, you know, Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan and, you know, people who are in the military industrial complex, people who profit from us being in a constant state of war. It is uh, those in the administrative state, in the national security state, who derive more authorities and ability to take away uh, our liberty when we are in a heightened state of crisis or war. It is the, the, their friends and billionaires and people in media who all derive their power from being able to have a figurehead that essentially they can control. And the most troubling part about, there's so many things wrong with this, of course, but really at, at the most fundamental level, you look at, um, you know, our country is the oldest democracy in the world, but the reality of a truly functioning and thriving democracy that has brought to life the vision that our founders had for us, that we really have a government of, by, and for the people, and that we have the ability and responsibility for that matter to ensure that um, the government we have only exists with the consent of the governed. That becomes very hard to do to hold people accountable when the person that you voted for is, is certainly not the one making the decisions. Gabbard's criticism of the cabal within the Democratic Party controlling the government taps into a growing concern about unaccountable elites undermining democracy. For many, the idea that shadowy groups, not elected officials, are the true power brokers feels like a betrayal of the democratic process and a threat to national sovereignty. Her naming of figures like Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama resonates with conservative audiences. As Gabbard, a former Democrat, positions herself as someone who understands the dynamics within liberal circles. Her claims that military-industrial complexes and media elites profit from endless wars and crises hit at a long-standing critique of big government cronyism and interventionism. Many fear that elites exploit crises to expand government control and limit individual freedoms. Gabbard's message taps into this anxiety, portraying elites as opportunists who manipulate circumstances to consolidate their power. Her remarks also speak to a deeper sense of alienation, where individuals feel disconnected from the political process. The idea that citizens aren't truly choosing their leaders, but instead are subject to the will of powerful elites, evokes feelings of powerlessness. Gabbard's frustration with the inability to hold these elites accountable mirrors, public concerns about transparency and authenticity in governance. If elected leaders are merely puppets, democracy itself becomes a facade and individuals lose their agency to influence their own futures. By framing the political elite as an irresponsible cabal, Gabbard aligns herself with those who feel controlled by distant, invisible forces. Her invocation of the Founders' vision for government of, by, and for the people stirs a sense of patriotism and a desire to reclaim personal and national identity in a system that feels increasingly detached from its democratic roots. These appeals tap into emotions of duty and the longing to restore individual agency against what feels like an artificial and manipulated system. Her depiction of the current administration as controlled by an elite group benefiting from war and crisis serves as a rallying cry for those who feel betrayed by the political establishment. This narrative arouses anger, frustration, and fear among voters who perceive themselves as pawns in a game driven by powerful interests. These strong emotions can motivate political actions, 
such as voting for a candidate like Donald Trump, whom Gabbard has aligned with, as a way to challenge the perceived control of these elites and reclaim a sense of power.